Hey, welcome back to another edition of this Boomer's Logic, man. Um, first and foremost, let me jump in here and say that with this delay, please forgive the delay um, and the lack. We're trying to get everything sorted out, uh, as you can see with the new uh, backdrop and all that type of stuff. We're trying to step up our game, man, because we're getting more subscribers and we want to, you know, kind of be a little bit more uh, professional with y'all, man. Get y'all a little better content, you know, better look, all that type of stuff, man, as we... Uh, inform you and, and infotain you and all that type of stuff. But anyway, I digress on that point. Today we're going to be talking about Abraham Lincoln, one of his most famous quotes, the need for blacks to have financial independence, and Buckhead. Once again, we're going to talk about Abraham Lincoln, one of his most, favorite quote, most famous quotes, uh, the need for blacks to have financial independence, and Buckhead up in Atlanta, Georgia, man. But before we do, man, this is Ebron Ben Malau back at you with another edition of this Boomer's Logic. If you haven't already, go to the go over to the channel, man. Um, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, tell a friend to tell a friend, man. Go and sign up for this thing because we chop it up and bust things down. But um, I want to jump in without further ado. I want to jump in and I want to read you something from Abraham Lincoln. This is something that I that you know I. I read a lot when I was incarcerated, man. If you and if you can't tell yet, you'll start to realize that further and further as we we go along and and, and do this thing here on this channel. But I wanted to read you this um, quote that I had read before from Abraham Lincoln. It was part of a, a speech that he gave um, back in September 18, 1858. It was part of a debate actually up in Charleston, Illinois, and we're gonna jump right into it. It says. Um, and if you want to, you know, if you want to Google it, look it up, it's, uh, it's, it will be underneath. Just all you got to do is Google uh, Mr. Lincoln's speech, September 18th, 1858. And it's going to pull this up in Charleston, Illinois. And you can check it out for yourself to make sure that, man, he lying. Abraham Lincoln is the greatest. Uh, he liberated us from slavery and all this now. This how he really felt about you. And I'm reading this for a reason. Um. Mr. Lincoln's speech. Mr. Lincoln took the stand at a quarter before three and was greeted with a vivacious and a protracted applause, after which he said, ladies and gentlemen, this is Abraham Lincoln's speech, ladies and gentlemen, it would be very difficult for an audience so large as this to hear distinctly what a speaker says, and consequently, it is important that as profound silence be preserved as possible. While I was at the hotel today, an elderly gentleman called upon me to know whether I was really in favor, this is what he said, whether he really was in favor of producing a perfect equality between the Negroes and the white people. Great laughter, which I had not proposed to myself on this occasion to say much on that subject. Yet, as the question was asked me, I thought I would occupy perhaps five minutes in saying something in regard to it. I say that uh, then that I am not, nor ever I have, nor have I ever been in favor of bringing about in any way the social and political equality of the white and black races. Let me read that to you again. This is what Abraham Lincoln said. I will say then that I am not, nor have I ever been in favor of bringing in any way the social and political equality of white and black races. So, applause from the crowd that I am not or or have I ever been in favor of making voters or jurors of Negroes nor qualifying them to hold office nor to intermarry with white people and I will say in addition to this that there is a physical difference between the white and black races which I believe will forever forbid the two races living together uh, on terms of social and political equality and in as much as they cannot live they cannot so live while they do remain together there must be the position of superior and inferior once again let me let me read this again while they do meaning coexist live together remain together there must be the position of superior and inferior. And I, as much as any other man, 
am in favor of having the superior position assigned to the white race. Let me repeat that. And I as much as any other man in favor of having the superior position assigned to the white race. I say upon this occasion, I do not perceive that because the white man is to have the superior position to the Negro should be denied everything. I do not understand. I do not understand that because I do not want a Negro woman for a slave. I must necessarily want her for a wife. Cheers and laughter. My understanding is that I can just let her alone. I am now in my 50th year, and I certainly never have had a black woman for either a slave or a wife. It seems to me quite possible for us to get along without making either of uh, make either slaves or wives of Negroes. I will add to this that I have never seen to uh, seen to my knowledge a man, woman, or child who is in favor of produ uh, producing perfect equality socially and politically between Negroes and whites. So I'm going to leave it there. Now, if you want to read it in its entirety, once again, you can go to and Google this speech. It's going to be from, uh, I just wanted to read that part to you, September 18th, 1858, uh, Abraham uh, Lincoln and Charleston, Illinois. I mean, he was in a debate or something like that. But anyway, Abraham Lincoln made it clear that he never, ever intended or wanted equality on any level between blacks and whites. He always wanted for the white race to have the superior position financially, socially, economically, however else uh, uh, you, you want to put it. He wanted the white race to always to remain in the superior position. My reason for pointing this out today is that no matter how much you reach, borrow big, uh, scrap, you will never, ever, ever, ever have true equality with them as long as you allow yourself to be subject to them and their system. This is why I continue to tell you. See, they'll give you holidays like Juneteenth. Um, they'll give you this. They just gave y'all a new holiday, which was um, hip hop. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, hip hop. It was. It's a hip hop holiday. Something uh, hip hop. Uh, something hip hop holiday or uh, the commemoration of hip hop. It's an actual. They give you an actual holiday that's predicated or based upon hip hop. The, see, they'll give you these. They'll even give you a token black president who, who's, who's nothing less than their than their puppet. But they will never give you true equality. Don't mix um, true equality with them coming in and building a school, one school in your community. Don't don't do that. Um, don't don't look at them as as being as as being some type of uh, 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 savior with you know them them coming in and and giving you a, a, a stimulus check. Look, they, they're looking out for us. No, they're just giving you crumbs for their table. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I'm, I'm going to get into the point that I'm trying to make with this video here in regard to having your own. This is, this is important because Abraham Lincoln's speech is something that is innately established. It's established within the psyche and the DNA, and I, you can say whatever you want, the psyche and the DNA of all whites. This is something that they're bred, it's bred into them at birth, this superiority complex. Um, this is why you have this thing now, this whole new thing called Karens and all this stuff where they're, you know, they're getting videotapes showing um, their elitist attitudes and all this. Abraham Lincoln told you best. You, you think that he freed the slave because of some moral conscious. You know, uh, he, he has a moral epiphany. No, he freed the slaves simply because of the uh, financial inequality between the South and the North, the North and the South. You know what I'm saying? So this is what that was all about at the end of the day. But he himself laid it out for you, and you can hear the applause. This is something that is bred into each generation of them. This superiority mindset is them, and then it's you. So 
um, we're going to jump into this video because I want to share this video with you, man, and show you exactly how they move. While, while we're sitting back trying to uh, uh, argue about um, uh, tra uh, trans rights and marching for um, uh, 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 black equality and, and, and gay rights, and, and we're marching about this, check out what they're doing. Now remember, this is this is Buckhead outside of Atlanta. Now I'm gonna show you this elitist mindset, a mindset that we need to adopt and embrace and start to think strictly about ourselves and stop thinking about everybody else in their plights. Because we give, once again, I get into that trillion thing. We give trillions of dollars every year into this system. And I wanna show you how they work and how they operate and how they function. And how we do as well have the ability and the financial means and the structure um, to actually do our own thing. And I'm about to show you something right now. And this is because all of this is due to the violence in Atlanta, what they're doing in Buckhead. This was, as you can see on the video, let me see. This was uh, July 28th of this year. All right. We have an increased police presence, but some of their neighbors in North Atlanta disagree. This northern suburb, known as Buckhead, was annexed by Atlanta in the 1950s. And here, too, they've seen an increase in crime recently, which is why some residents in this wealthy and mostly white neighborhood now say this. First, first and foremost, first thing, two things. First, the increase in, in crime. It's. I've seen the increase in crime because I, I kind of keep up with the news up there in Atlanta because I'm down here in Columbus, Georgia. I kind of watch from afar. But at the same time, uh, it, I guess it is an uptick. I, I wouldn't say that it's rivaling what we see on an everyday basis in, in, in the inner cities. Um, but you do see them going up there cutting cutting a, a fool a bit. But see, their, their communities are built and made strictly to be crime-free. They, they do not tolerate foolishness. They don't suffer fools. So when you get to coming up there and you get to doing little stuff, um, they don't tolerate it. Once, If it's once a year, twice a year, three times a year, that's too much for them. And they acknowledge it and they step to it and they handle it with their purse strings. They don't go to the government and check out what they did. And secondly, the, the, uh, the key thing she also said was it's a, predominantly white community. This this community was founded um, by affluent white people that came together. Um, I was told the story when I was incarcerated up in there in USP Atlanta by one of the uh, officers, white officers who was there, and uh, he had taken me to the hospital um, for a doctor's appointment, and we were on a high floor, and I could see the two different high, uh, skylines. And he explained to me, he was like, this is Atlanta, and this is uh, Buckhead over here. And then he told me the history of Buckhead, that you had a lot of influential, very rich uh, white people come together who was tired of the crime in their areas. They came together, pooled their resources, and, and created Buckhead, um, like she just uh, told you, um, and created Buckhead. Now, the most important part is it was a bunch of affluential, rich white folks. They said, look, we're getting the hell away from these people. These people have lost their minds. We're going up this way. And this is what they did. So let's get back to the video. The solution is to break away. We feel we're living in a war zone in Buckhead. Bill White is leading the effort to create a separate city of Buckhead, allowing them to use their own tax base to fund their own budget. White says their city would lobby to tighten bail and sentencing rules and deploy its own independent police force. Okay few things before I let it keep rolling because we're not going to watch the whole clip. It's a nine-minute thing, but we're going to watch about three minutes of it. First thing is he said we're in a war zone, which really not what they consider a war zone. It's probably five crimes in their community a year is a war zone. And that, and, and that in and of itself speaks highly of how they view peace in their communities versus, you know, we ain't, we're not going to let things get too far gone. Well, we just allow things to get too far gone because we got this, you know, shh, you know, minds business mentality where, you know, you're minding your business and things just continue to escalate and, and, and running, you know, and get worse and worse and worse because 
people are not addressing the issues that are right in front of them that are in their communities and they refuse to address it. Next, you see what they talked about. They are going to raise the money on their own, tax themselves. And that's going to, I'm going to take that somewhere on, on a couple videos up. But to tax themselves to raise enough money to break free completely and totally from Atlanta, create their own city because their pockets can handle it. See, why we're out running around buying uh, uh, $25 million things to shove in our foreheads and buying a house up in the suburbs, we're not understanding that you're moving into their community. What these people are doing is saying, we're taking the whole community and getting the hell away from these people. Now, what the next thing they said was that not only are they going to uh, have their own police, they are actually going to have stiffer penalties for if you violate in their community, meaning they're going to have their own court systems, meaning they're going to have their own rules and guidelines in regard to uh, sentencing you, penalizing, because you can do that. And this is what I keep telling y'all. Y'all think I'm playing. These, these people right here are showing you. As long as you got the, see, it, see, we, we do too much playing. We talk about how wealthy, oh, oh, look at look at LeBron James and look at this dude. No, 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 no. This is true wealth. When you are able to amass, put together your resources, pool your resources and able to sit at the collective table and talk to one another and come up with a solution, a real genuine solution to your problems. And these people sat at the table. Remember, this is how we used to be when we had uh, uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, Thank you, uh, 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 Chad, for that information. Um, when we had Tulsa, Oklahoma, we had, you know, think tanks. We had uh, 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 communities where we sat and we talked and we discussed issues, community meetings and stuff like this where we said, hey, look, this is what's going on. and We need to address it. How are we going to address it? And this is one of the things that we did as a collective. We don't do that anymore because we're on some mind your business type tip. You know what I'm saying? Uh, don't don't snitch. Mind your business. You know what I'm saying? Stay out their business over there. That ain't none of your business. You know what I'm saying? And instead, these people are telling you, no, 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 no. This is our community. We're going to mind our own business. But let's get back to the video because I want to show you where they're going. But the most important part, one of the most important things is they're saying that the penalty for breaking the law in our city is going to be way stiffer than if you do it over in Atlanta. This is the one, one of the things that I keep telling you. You have the ability to do this. Two trillion dollars, man. You got the ability to do the same thing. But Abraham Lincoln told you best. He said, we, as whites, we're going to keep the uh, position of superiority. Whereas you all are going to stay in the uh, 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 submissive or the inferior position. We're going to be the superiors. So we can make moves like this. Y'all can't because we're going to have y'all so divided amongst yourselves and running them up and, and y'all can go in there. Oh, he's just laying conspiracy theories. Okay. If I'm laying conspiracy theories, how in the hell are these people literally, this is on PBS. See, this is why I love PBS and uh, the, the uh, NPR because they give you the news and they let you disseminate in any way that you want to. They don't try to drive it to the left or to the right. They just give you the information. And this dude, he's going to, when he gets ready to talk again, he's going to give you some raw stuff. And you're going to be like, wow, did he just say that? And he's going to tell you, yeah, we're going to create tougher laws. We're going to do all this stuff. So if you come up the Buckhead plan, this is what we're going to do to you. So you might as well stay down there in the inner city. The massive police presence will be something that the new Buckhead City Police Department will absolutely provide. Buckhead's departure would take away significant resources from Atlanta. By some estimates, this area comprises 40% of Atlanta's property wealth, a large part of its tax base. Critics say that would hurt the city's ability to stem rising crime and inequality. And I think what Buckhead City will do will most certainly push the criminals away from Buckhead. And everybody in Buckhead loves that idea. Let me pause right there. Two things. First, what he really wanted to say is it's going to push them blacks back over there. It's, go, it's going to what this Buckhead City going to do, not not the crime or the criminals. It's going to push them blacks back to where they belong. That's first. Number two, I love the fact that these people are so confident that they're not trying to hide anything from you. They're not trying to hide anything from you. Look, we create 40 percent 
we're 40% of what y'all need. We're 40% of what y'all need. And y'all going to suffer without us. Period. So, oh, y'all don't want to play ball? Okay, we'll take our ball and go home. We'll take our ball and go home. This is exactly what we're going to do. And the first thing, another thing he talked about with that huge police presence. See, you could become sovereign like Buckhead City. You can do this if you were able to afford your own police force, your own courts. If you're able to establish these things, you're able to do this. But a lot of us don't acknowledge this or identify with this because we're, we're so busy trying to beg them to let us move to where they're at instead of establishing our own suburbs and our own communities and our own cities, establishing a, a hierarchy in our own communities and our own suburbs, our own, you know what I'm saying, everything else. We're, we're looking to them to want to run to them, but they're telling you, we're tired of y'all. Y'all going back to where y'all supposed to be, man. Going back down, down the trough, man. Y'all coming a little too far. Y'all creating too many issues. And they're going to show you in a clip here in just a second that, that and, I, and I'll show you in different clips, various clips, that it is it, every time they show somebody breaking the law in Buckhead, it is one of us. How does taking those resources away help the rest of the city? Well, Atlanta has done this to themselves. We're not, we're not taking anything away from them. Uh, they've done this to themselves. It doesn't really kind of resonate with you until you go through something yourself. Buckhead resident Ileana Kovic backs the effort to break away after she and her boyfriend, Jason Eads, were brutally assaulted in a parking lot last June. The like sheer terror of having someone put a knife in your face and tell you profanity and say to get on your knees and beg for your life punch you until you're unconscious. Like, I didn't ask for that. What do you think it would take for you to feel safe right now? Definitely more of a police presence. More police on the streets, Sharkey says, would reduce crime in the short term, but without addressing underlying issues, wouldn't stop cycles of crime over the long term. It also carries additional costs, he says, in the form of police violence, mass incarceration, and intensive surveillance, disproportionately impacting communities of color. We should be pushing police to do their job differently, to build. I'm going to pause right there because this is this dude, man. And he, he Once again, it's another white person trying to come up come and tell us how to handle black issues. And this is one of the major issues in our community because we're always looking outward to try to rectify or, or uh, um, cure what's going on inwardly. And we understand what's going on inwardly because it's, it's us that are doing it. So we know how to deal with the situations and the problems. And I keep continue to say the same thing. It takes a swift, strong hand, hard hand, when it comes to us Israelites, and, and it doesn't really matter what you call yourself. You can call yourself an African-American, you can call yourself an African, I don't care what you call yourself. At the end of the day, when it, when it comes to us, melanated people in this country, it takes a, a, a stern, stern hand to deal with us. You know what I'm saying? All this loving and, and patting on the head and, oh, it's a mental disorder. Miss me with that. Miss me with that. It takes a strong hand to deal with us as, as a people. And I always go back to the history of the Israelites and Yahweh said what he said about us. He said, man, y'all are some stiff-necked people, man. Y'all are stubborn and stiff-necked. And this is what it is. But I'm gonna get back to the video. And like I say, I'm not gonna play this part. Uh, I'm pretty much done with that. But I do wanna say this in regard to what the dude was saying, um, who's campaigning, who's pushing this drive to do this, they're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. it it'll be done here within probably the next two years they'll completely and totally break off because you got to remember the amount of money that's in Buckhead and the amount of money that they stand to lose if they keep allowing this element into their community so they said look we got to break this off we got to sever it and the first thing he said that was that impressed me and I loved it that he said nah, nah Atlanta brought this on themselves don't don't come to me with this whole uh what what's gonna happen if y'all do that and how's that gonna help we don't care Atlanta brought this on themselves. Simple as that. Instead of all that political two-step, he was straightforward. <laughs> we don't care. Atlanta brought this on themselves, man. They did this to themselves. You know what I'm saying? We're going to take our ball and go home. You know what I'm saying? They had the opportunity to do the right thing. They didn't. We'll take care of it ourselves. And this is the mindset that we need. 
not to dancing around, not to playing, and not to, well, well what do we do? And this is, oh, let's all sit down and talk about it. Look, talking is done. It, all the rapping, look at what's going on in your communities, man. All the rapping should be done. It, it can't get any worse. It's going to get worse, but it shouldn't. It shouldn't get to this point, but it, it's going to. Because all we want to do is sit down and talk and go in and, and tell, uh, let's let's have a powwow with these gangs and this and that. Man, ain't none of that going, that's not going to solve and cure anything. Period. Now, I did speak about, and I'm going to get to Abraham Lincoln and tie him into this, and then I'm going to cut this video short. But I did speak about the other day, uh, what was I speaking about? I think I said uh, something about, oh yeah, about the feds is, is, is coming around up all them people. Now, here's the problem with that. Even when the feds remove the, let's say the, let's say they go in and they hit everybody from 20, they hit everybody from 18 to 25. 18 to, uh, yeah, let's say 25. Now you've removed a large swath of the male population or a uh, uh, group of the male population there. Um, now you don't have anybody to raise these, these young men to pattern themselves after and, and like these children that are coming up, they're lost because there's no men in the equation. You know what I'm saying? So now all you have once again is it, are these women who are abandoned, like I explained to you uh, on the short no posse thing, where all those women were, were abandoned. They were there raising these young men and they had no ability or idea how to do it. So just like that, you're going to have this same cycle repeat itself. So it's an unbreakable cycle. But there's only, it, there is a way to break it. But as long as we sit back and rely on the government to solve the issues for us, this is their answer to the problem. We're going to lock y'all up, make you out of free labor. And this is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's, it just means a whole nother generation that we can rely on y'all to you know continue to devour yourself we don't really have to do anything but sit back kind of clear out the debris and take the ones that we want that are healthy and strong and, and put them in the prison and let them work for free for the next 20 to 25 years you know what i'm saying so this is this is the endless evolution or or, or uh yeah this is the endless evolution and how it rotates and continues to go and this is and this is where where it is. This is where it's going to remain until we take the initiative, like these people did, and say, "Nah, man, check this out. We got enough resources. We can get the hell away from this. So we ain't gonna keep dealing with this because it's uh, it's so many. And this, I said this when I was incarcerated. I could not believe the stuff that I used to hear about in Atlanta, such as schools. There was a heat wave, and I want to say 2010, I believe where all of August, it was 100 degrees, and I think it was three inner city schools that did not have air conditioning. They, none. They it did not have air conditioning. Um, three inner city schools, uh, two or three. One of them was right around the corner from uh, Eddie Long's church. And um, everybody was, was outraged with the government. For what? This is Y'all call that Chocolate City. That's where the players play. This is where you got more black millionaires uh, it, than anywhere in the world. But y'all y'all, y'all sit back and buy your Bentleys and make sure you, you know what I'm saying, do everything you want to do. But you don't, you can't pull your resources and have somebody go down and, you know, fit, fix the air in the school. How, I mean, how irresponsible and negligent can you be? You got all these millionaires living within this city. And, and I'm not just talking about entertainers, movie stars, Professional athletes. I'm not just talking about them. You got businessmen. Hell, you got drug dealers, millionaire drug dealers standing down there. And all of y'all stay right there. And, and you just looking at the crime and the lawlessness run rampant and you're not doing anything about it. Now, back to what Abraham Lincoln said and make it make sense is, is because of how they view us. How they view us just like them people in Buckhead said. Man, hey, man, they brought this on themselves. This is how they view us. We are always going to keep the superior position. This is how they view us. Y'all are inferior. So we don't, we, we, look, we're not going to try to come in there and help y'all with y'all issue. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's going to benefit us anyway. But we're going to disconnect, disassociate ourselves from you. We're going to take our revenue. We're going to take our money. And we're going to let it circulate amongst us. We're going to get richer. 
It's going to benefit us more. We're going to get more wealthy. And now we have true, we have truly set up a, a community and a society, a city that our children can inherit and our children's children and so on and so forth. And that's true generational wealth. Where we thinking that just because you, you know what I'm saying, you, you got a, a few hundred million dollars, that that's just, no. That can go just like that, man. And this is what Abraham Lincoln was trying to show you. Look, I, I'm not saying don't give them anything. Give them, give them a little something. You, you can see you got a little something. But we're going to keep the superior position. And this is how they feel about you. And with that, I'm going to say this before I sign off, man, because I think I, I did enough for the day because I just wanted to share that with you because I've seen it and, it and it brought to mind Abraham Lincoln's thing that he, he was rapping about. And I shared it with my wife. She found it. She was like, oh, my goodness. And then, like I say, this just triggered this whole thing with Buckhead and what they're getting ready to do. Just kind of put me in the remembrance of what I had read when I was incarcerated in regard to Abraham Lincoln. But before I go, my partner Chad um, asked me one day to put together the financial structure, like a business, put put together a financial structure. Kind of show, you know what I'm saying, I, that I believe what he was saying was kind of show the people where you're headed. Um, or where you where you envision we should go. Um, also, my brother Tony had asked me, and I made a video about it before, that he had asked me one day, he said, okay, man, you keep laying out all the problems, what's the solutions? Um, and to that I say, Buckhead just showed you the solution. Buckhead just showed you the solution. That's first. Secondly, to my partner Chad, and the answer that I gave Chad was that I attempted to do that before. Um, when I first started this channel, when it was underneath uh, the Backyard Chronicles, I actually started to lay out um, the biblical um, banking system and show, was showing brothers and sisters off, off of that uh, structure how we could establish generational wealth, get land, and become sovereign and have your own thing just like Bucky. Um but I, I set up, I actually set that, started doing that, and I set up a GoFundMe. And I was like, hey, listen, we can we can all contribute. We can, you know, start this up, and we can go buy land, and we can start to, you know, establish businesses, all this type of stuff. Man, listen, I didn't get not one rent. And I think I said this before. I didn't get a dime out of it. I think there's 42. I think I got 42 uh, subscribers now. Um, I didn't get a, a red cent back then. Um I, I wasn't discouraged because I said, man, I'm going to stay the course and I'm going to do exactly what my heart um, is set on doing. And that's to go get at least 10 acres of land and start to establish my own thing that I have envisioned. But what I will do, um, based upon what my partner Chad had asked me, because I believe that many of you who continue to follow me today are genuinely concerned, number one, and ultimately want... Um, I guess, liberation from what ails them around you. You know what I'm saying? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm I'm actually going to go back into setting up the financial structure that's in the biblical financial structure, show you how lib uh, 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 Israel was actually um, a superpower, financial superpower, how they got that way um, and how they remained that way as long as they were obedient to the structure that Yah had given them. Um, and I'm going to lay it out, the financial aspect of it, I'm going to lay it out once again. And I'm also going to open up, I don't know if it'll be today, I'll let y'all know when it's established and opened up, um, a, I don't know if it's going to be GoFundMe, I have to talk to my wife, as she knows more about that stuff. And I'm going to open one of these up, because if we are truly concerned, if we are truly, if we truly want to make a change, um, I believe that it starts there. I believe that it is the securing of something that we can call our own first, and then we can start to build from that particular point. But it takes all of us as a collective to do it, to get on the same page and to push this narrative. Once again, if you look at Buckhead, if you look at what that man just said, he said, man, look, we taking our ball and go home, man. We got ours. We got our piece of the pie. F Atlanta, they down there tripping. We we gonna go do our own thing. If y'all come up here playing, we're gonna lock you up forever. We're gonna have more police than you can count. And this is how we're gonna do it. And we can have the same exact thing. And I'm going to actually I'm gonna establish the same thing and I'm gonna put it out there again 
because I don't want to be that person that, uh, you know, just gives all the issues and continues to point out all the problems. I want to also come with the solutions. And this is what I really believe that one of the major solutions that, that I really believe that this is the solution that we establish our own and that we start to build on our own. This is what I truly believe. Um, and, and by the way, um, before, before I actually get off of here, if it's any brothers, any of y'all, man, that want to be a part of a think tank as well as uh, a board, any men who want to be a part of a think tank and be a part of a board, once again, part of a think tank and a part of a board, man, reach out to me, man. You know, uh, some, most of y'all are on my messenger. Some, you know, if you if, if you're not on my messenger, leave leave. Uh, you know, say hey, man, this is such and such, man. Uh, if you can, look me up and, and you know whatever. And you know, I would like to set up a think tank where some of us can start to kind of tinker around and and kicking ideas, do some uh, some Zoom calls and some Zoom meetings, probably maybe once twice a month. And kind of kick the tires on a few things that we're hearing, directions that things are headed, and doing some stuff like that, man, and try to be more productive and proactive as a collective. Um, also, I, I'm trying to start a board um, where if this actually does happen, where people really do start to put pool resources, that we can actually have a group of men who are over that over that pot and are able to say, well, look. This is the direction we need to head first for these reasons. And our collective voices can be the guiding light or the, uh, yeah, the guiding light in regard to, you know, the direction that we're going to be headed because we need to establish something, man. In the light of everything and in, in light of everything that's going on around us right now, um, we need to put something together. And like I say, man, if you want to be a part of a think tank where we can start kicking the tires on some things, kicking some ideas around, we can do that. Also, if you want to be a part of this board, uh, community board, if you're actually wanting to be a part of this community um, and you say, hey, man, I do want to invest. Uh, we need to set a board up that can be over this where we're not just bouncing around willy nilly. Because if we're serious, this is what we do. Um, if not, hey, man, I'll just keep making videos, posting uh, uh, um, millennials doing goofy millennial stuff. But if we're serious here. Man, let's let's try something different. We didn't try everything else. We didn't we didn't try Jesus. We didn't try church. We didn't try voting. We didn't try everything. Ain't nothing working for us. So um, let's try something different, man. So man, I'm gonna wrap this one up, man. Uh, old A, man. Uh, not only did he uh, kick men in the face, he kicked the black woman in in her butt too with that. Um, but that's how they feel about you. And, and Buckhead just showed you, hey, man, not only are we superior to you, we getting ready to show you by taking our ball and walk the hell away from you and watch Atlanta just implode because without us, you're not going to be generating that same revenue, man. Um, it's the same, but it's right there in front of your face, man. But what, uh, like I say, man, all the time, man, he brought me in back with this boomer logic, man. For you boomers, I just gave y'all plenty of more wisdom to kick about. For you millennials, man, since you don't really know how to think, I just gave you an opinion. Love you, and I will see you on the next video.